Hello! <laughs> it's Mr. Ed here on a beautiful, I mean, look at this. Look at this. It's just such a beautiful day today. January 30th, 2024. And I'm headed over to the, towards the honey house right now because uh, I've got a, a, one of my, one of my most all-time favorite things to do, projects to do in the honey house, and that is to start rendering some wax. I love, I love rendering the wax. I, I like getting that old nasty comb and transforming it into something that, that is once again usable for the bees and, and then by, by getting the wax ready for the bees, it just helps me in the honey production because by giving them the bees the wax then they don't have to spend the energy resources producing it and so it saves time and when it comes to honey it, it really is it's all timing and and you've got to you got to have everything in place so today January 30th I'm already thinking about our honey production because all all of my my steps that I, I do to get there, it, it you have to be prepared for them, and anticipating what you need as early as you can to do that, it's just what you, something that you need to do if you want to um, <laughs> produce honey at least. And for me here at the Abbey, that's really my my main focus on the bees is producing honey. So that's what I'm doing today. Walking over to the honey house, uh, I've got three different types of wax that I've been uh, working on. I've been cleaning out my dead outs, so I've got a big old garbage bag of that. I'll show you all this stuff. I got a, a nice chest that's got old comb. In fact, it was that comb from the, the cutout of the uh, top bar hive that Charlie, Margaret, and I did. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and and then I've also got cappings from honey that I processed in December and it, it's just a hodgepodge of wax but different types of wax one of the things I'm gonna be doing today is uh, getting the cappings done and I've got some honey that that uh, I've got some, some in frames that needs to be scraped and just drained out but I'm gonna show you all that stuff, but also I can't get into the where the, the, the wax melter is. I can't get into that building right now. And <laughs> the reason is because they are changing the the lights out in it. The maintenance department has <laughs> have been so gracious to me and they came in and changed the uh, lights from the inside of the honey house. They, they went and changed those to LEDs and they took those lights and now they're putting them into the, the room where the kettle is. And as I'm approaching that area right here, look at this, here we go. Let me show you what we got. What's going on, Mr. Jeff? So this is, this is Trent, the supervisor of the job. Hey, how you guys doing? So, so Trent, tell yes, us, can you tell what, what, what Trent, Terrence is doing inside here? So we actually went ahead and remodeled the lights in your workshops, which actually he did a phenomenal job. The lights we took out of there, we'll move it into your extra spare storage. Uh -huh. What would you like to call this? This is where we just melt, melt wax. Very well. It was really dark and dim. So he took the lights he took out of this and moved it into this, and now he's rewiring it. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go inside and look what the job that Terrence is doing. So they had to move all the stuff out. And there's there's the man doing the job right there, Terrence. What's up? How you doing? And and he's taken the old lights, which we only had three of them up in the ceiling. He's taken them down and placed the new lights up in here. And then he's going to put three more in the middle as well. So we will have plenty of light in here to see what we're doing. It won't yeah. be so dark. Yeah, we got to get you right so you Thank, can see. <laughs> thanks so much, Terry. Yes, All right, let's get inside the honey house and <laughs> show you what, what's going on in there. Before we get inside and show you what's going on inside, let me, let me show you the wax that I got out here. I've been, I, this is where I've been spending my last two weeks is out here. We've had 
dreary, rainy, cold weather, and I've been in here cleaning dead outs and stacking up boxes, changing frames out. It, it really, it's, it's, it's a part, a good part, I think, about keeping bees is doing this part, uh, just prep for springtime when, you know, all the bees are, are doing it. So as you can tell, this was my work area right in here. And I mean, I, I went through a ton of frames. In fact, let me, let me move the camera over here. There is the stack of frames that I'm no longer going to be using. It's a, it's a ton of them. In fact, let's, let's get a better shot of that. These frames, it, it would just require so much effort on my part to get them back into usable frames. It, it, for me, it's just not worth the time to do it. I just soon buy new frames, and which is what we did. We we went to Premier and bought 800 and a pallet of it, so 810 of them. Is and those will all be used for our honey supers, and that's most of these frames. Well, they were dead out, so it was some of it were honey supers, but most of them were brew boxes, which is why the wax moth is on it. So now let me show you the wax that I took off of those frames. Let's see if I can get this garbage can in. Now there's there's all the the wax. It's a, a little garbage can full. I don't think it's going to make a really big block, but it's 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 going to make some wax. And then in this ice chest right here, well, I kept this is the the wax from the cutout from the top bar. These are all the top bar, and the reason I kept these in the box because there is a lot of wax on it, and as I go through this wax, I'm going to remove this wax. I may even boil the water and just dip these things in it to let the wax come off of that because there is a substantial amount of wax on all of these all of these bars and then underneath the bars then we have comb uh, from that cutout as well so I'm gonna combine this ice chest right here and that garbage can we're gonna make one block of wax out of that and then the cappings that I will now show you inside the building that will be the second block. So let's go inside and I'm going to show you what I got the cappings in there. These buckets are the buckets that I used to put the honey in that I took from when I was uncapping the fall harvest. We probably had, I don't know, it was probably about 60 or 70 frames uh, I'll put that link to that video in, in this description of this video. But these are the buckets that I just put the honey in. And so you have this very, very thick layer of wax on all of them. That one wasn't too thick. This one is that's pretty thick. That one's probably about an inch and a half. And then this one, this one's thick. And that one's probably another inch and a half, two inches of, of honey. So you can see the honey boiling up <laughs> in that. So these are the cappings that I need to remove from this honey and then let that stuff drain out and then go ahead and render this. Now, now normally when I remove the, the cappings from the top of the honey drums, I'm using um, a big old ice scoop, but that wouldn't even fit inside here. So I'm gonna try to use the spatula this time. So all I, all I want to do is get underneath that layer of wax 
and just lift up. And I'm using a knife to scoop it off of my spatula. And I think it's going to work in my advantage having this honey so thick. So I'm not going to have a lot of it dripping. All right, we all know we're not going to get it all. And as this honey drains down anyway, most of that stuff will stick to the side of the drum. But we removed that first layer of wax and foam. And I got to tell you, I, I'm like so tempted to stick my finger in there and get a big old finger lick of that stuff. <laughs> but I won't this time. I'll wait. And now I'm going to go ahead and cap this one up. And we're the next one. That one looks pretty good. Cap this one up and I gotta switch buckets because I, my other bucket I'm using for this. So let's change this up. All switched up. Let's get this last one done. All right, that ought to do it. That looks pretty good enough to me. This is the amount of honey mixture wax that I got. And let's see if we can, see if we got some of the honey dripping out. Yeah, it's dripping out, but it's so thick, that honey is so thick. I'm gonna let it drain overnight all on itself. And then tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be able to get into the kettle to uh, melt some wax and Terrence will be finished over there. So it's already 3.30. I've done enough for today. <laughs> so I'll see y'all tomorrow. Here we are the next morning and there is still honey up inside of this all this wax but you know I, I changed my mind I'm not gonna try to get the rest of this honey out of here instead the bees were on on those few little frames yesterday we're gonna supposed to get up into the upper 60s again today maybe even 70 today it's it's right at 42 right now a little bit cold for the bees to be flying but I'm gonna just go ahead and set all of this stuff outside 
let the bees start robbing it out and getting a little bit of honey that's left. And let me lift the tray and I'll show you how much honey we did wind up getting. So, yeah, I bet you there's a gallon in there, or three quarters of one at least. I am happy, happy, happy to say Terrence has got the lights up. Look at that. Hot dog, we are cooking in light now. And I've already started getting the kettle going this morning. Uh, and what I, what I wanted to do this morning to get it started off, I cleaned out some more uh, dead out stuff right here. And to get the first batch going, I wanted to take these top bar sticks and you see the, the wax that's on top of them. Well, I, I, I want to get as much wax as I can. So what I did was, <laughs> I, it's going to be a little steam here. I put them inside of the kettle to get that wax off from underneath them. I mean, I can see all that yellow wax floating on the top. So these guys are done. I'll take these out and I'll put those next four in. And then after that, we're going to get this into the garbage, uh, into the kettle, as well as that stuff right there. Let me take those sticks out of there and drop the next ones in. Got all the top bars all cleaned off. Look at this. I mean, that's pretty cool how whoever made the top bars, they put that starter strip in there. Now, I'm going to hold on to these bars because it's just, this is pretty cool. And if nothing else, these things are going to make some great swarm lure. We could drop this stuff into a trap. And this stick right here, this this would attract bees. The 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 age that it's got on it, the propolis, the wax, all this stuff on it. This will make some great swarm lure. And now that that job is done, the only thing left to do is to start dropping in our wax into the kettle. That water is boiling once again, and I'm just going to start. <laughs> feeding it. rendered down, it's, it's going to probably make it, I don't know, it, it might make three pounds of wax, I don't know. We're going to find out though. Close the lid and we're going to check back on this thing. I'd say we give it about 10 minutes, that's probably all it will take. We'll come back in about 10 minutes. While our wax is melting out there, it gives me the time to go ahead and and take the honey that I just took all the, the wax off of it. And I just emptied the bottle the other day when I brought the honey over to the gift shop. So this, bo this bottle will hold 14 or 15 gallons, which is kind of what we've got right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and empty this honey into my bottler. And I mean, this honey is so thick, it's, it's gonna take, I think it's gonna take a long time for all that honey to drain out. We'll find out. I'll do this heaviest one first. is really dark but it's this year's honey it's just the fall stuff
I put it in the in the warmer, and I don't really see any crystals in it. Kind of do, but it'll heat up that honey to right at 100 degrees by the time I go to bottling it. It'll be just perfect. Now this is a pretty cool little contraption that you can get to put on your bottler. And it simply goes on the ledge of it. And then it'll hold the bucket for you while it drains. I'm going to let this thing drain out for a little while and once it gets drained out enough I'll scrape it out and then I'll do the next one. Alright, let me get this next bucket emptied out and then we're going to go out and look at how the wax is doing. Man, this stuff is heavy. set it on the rest and I'm going to grab that camera and we are going outside to check on our wax. Judging by that <laughs> sound of the boiling water, I'm sure it's pretty good. Oh, what a nasty, nasty mess that is. <laughs> uh, let's see if the camera can show that. As you can see, this stuff is nasty, nasty looking. But it is actually all melted down. There's still a little bit of comb like right, right there. Still some comb that hadn't gotten melted down. But for the most part, It's as, as good as it's going to get. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the, the heat now. Let it sit for just a, a few minutes and close it. And let all this stuff that hasn't melted melt down. And it, it's really, really, really dirty. There's a lot of dirt in it. And what the way I do the rendering now is I don't I don't really care about all this nasty stuff because the way I release the water the liquid and the wax from the kettle I have a strainer in the throat of that gate and it will trap all of well not all of it but probably 90 percent of all this cocoons and nasty stuff that you see floating on the top. Once, once the wax is melted out from between the cocoons and around the cocoons, the cocoons just float. And by releasing the water from beneath the cocoons, the water from beneath it, all that stuff will stay on, the, on inside of the kettle and I just let it set and eventually the wax will seep between all the trash and come out the front. So let's turn off the fire, close it for a little bit longer, and let all that stuff melt. And while that's melting, let's get inside. I'm going to change the bucket, clean it out, and add another one. And then we're going to get back out here and finish this up. I got all that honey inside the honey house taken care of into the bottler. And now let's finally look at what we got in here. Everything is now melted down. Let me move the camera and let, let you see it a little bit better. 
and I think you can see a little bit clearer the, the cocoons as they float up right here now that there's no wax holding them together they're just all floating on the top and now it's time to empty out all this liquid here we go initially it's just going to be water that comes out The reason, because wax is just floating on top of it. And I'm going to drain, empty this first bucket of water because my block of wax may be too big for all the water and the wax. And you can see a color change in the water when the wax does first start coming out. And I'm looking for that so I can stop the water. All right, I'm gonna stop it and empty this bucket. Hopefully I've taken enough water out of here so that the water and the wax will fit all in this one bucket. Look at that, that's all wax. See that, all yellow, that's all wax. So it really wasn't that much wax in all that. All of this stuff that's coming out right now is just wax. Let me move this out of the way.
is our wax continues to trickle out and gradually add to the size of that block of wax that it's going to make. Let me show you the inside of the kettle and show you there's quite a lot of wax still in here. Oops, sorry about that. And I'm going to keep the lid closed on this to keep the heat inside of here because the keeping the heat inside of here will allow that wax to stay liquid and then be able to trickle out. So it will it will continue trickling out at least 45 an hour and eventually it'll start cooling off and form a stalactite coming out of that kettle. So that's all I can really do for today. And so we're going to pick this video up tomorrow. I am so anxious to see what our wax is looking like. And look at that, we got lights. And look at that wax. Wow. <laughs> so like I told you yesterday, as the kettle is just warm enough still, the wax that's inside of it continues seeping out and it will leave this string of wax. And there is our block. Let's see, I don't want to touch it yet. I don't want to break that wax. Not yet, because that is just a very, very interesting structure formation. Let me try to get a better picture right here. As you can tell, it runs out from the inside. Let me show the top. So here is all of the cocoons and junk that was inside of the, the kettle. Let me get my knife and show you What I do is I place a screen. There you go, there's, there's my screen right there. This screen blocks all of the trash that's in here. It blocks it from coming out of the throat and you can see this is this stuff is really built up pretty tight and because the kettle remains hot from that the kettle itself is still hot and the wax all this wax is hot as well it it takes a long time before it cools off and solidifies and while it's solidifying while it's solidifying it is draining through the throat so I'm working on trying to dig out the screen that I put in there so I can show that to you And I can see a little bit of wax still inside of the cone, and the trash, because you see all these little yellow specks, that's wax. But this method that I'm using is the most efficient that I've discovered to get wax out of all these nasty cappings. All right, let me grab my plier and I'm gonna pull that out of there. There you go. Get some movement there. There you go. Now you can see as I pull it out, that's it. 
this screen right here, this plug, look at that big old block of wax in there. I'll, I'll get that out of there. That prevents all of this stuff from flowing through and into my wax. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do right now is remove that, all that wax droppings and we're going to go outside and find out just how big a block of wax we wound up with. Because that wax it's so loose in the bucket I won't even have to dump it out. It'll come out just by pulling on it, I hope. And I can show you, golly, it's, it's kind of heavy. There you go, here it comes, here it comes. Look at this. <laughs> There's that block of wax right there. Golly, that thing is beautiful. Look at this. Wow, look at that. Now, I'm, I'm guessing this is going to be probably, I don't know, somewhere between four and six pounds, maybe. Beautiful, beautiful block of wax. All right, let me dump that bucket out, clean up that kettle, because we got to do all the cappings next. Man, that's nice. Woohoo, thank you, Jesus, wow. I got the kettle cleaned out. It's not perfectly clean, but clean out as much as I'm gonna need to get it to do this next rendering. It's not spotless like I like it on a final rendering since it's just a first rendering, but it's clean enough. So it's ready to go. I've already put probably about two gallons of water, no, no more than two for sure. And I want to show you, this is all the debris that I took out of the kettle and what you don't see inside of all this is little yellow specks and even in the bigger chunks at least on the outside edges of it there were no specks yellow specks but as you got towards the center and the bottom, well, there were a little bit. But basically, there's, there's some right here. Look at this. Like, here's a little block of it right here. There's some little yellow in there. And then the main block right here, there's a little bit of yellow right there. But I, I mean, I bet I get 90, better than 90% of the wax that I... I put in there, 90% of the wax comes out and doesn't even wind up in my block. I mean, there's a little bit like this, but for the most part, the kettle really does a great job. Now on this next batch, I will not be putting the screen inside of the throat right there because right here is where I usually keep that screen, but they're cappings and it's very clean wax. So for those, I'll, when I open up the gate, I'm just going to run a screen on the outside and let it filter out. I'm going to go inside and grab that honey. Oh, and while I'm inside, I'll, I'll bring the camera and I'll show you uh, the bottler that's all full up. Our temperature is right at about 104. That's what it's set at, but of course it's still on. So it's, it hadn't reached that yet. And here we go. This is, I mean, that, that bottle is full. They say that it's a 16 gallon bottler, but by the time it's all said and done, I, I've probably gotten the most I've ever gotten out of it was 14 plus, 15 gallons. So I was right when I guessed that we have about 15 gallons of honey. <laughs> I think it's safe to assume that our water is ready to have our wax put into it. And here is the wax after the, the bees had gone through it. It's still wet, but which is one of the reasons why I 
only put a little bit of water in there because I'm going to capture whatever honey is in this and I'll feed this back to the bees. Let's dump this into our kettle. <laughs> it's only been a few minutes and it looks like it's just about done. Let me turn off the kettle and we're going to close that lid and let it sit there for a little while. about is all that honey smell. We're going to have a ton of bees in here real quick. So let's get this done pretty quickly. And again, I'm not straining this, the wax that was in here. I'm just going to catch whatever big pieces come out at that point right here. Let's go ahead and open up the gate. Even though it was just cappings, look at the debris that is in just the cappings. Now some of this may have come from the bees while they were feeding on the honey. Still there's a, there, there's a surprisingly amount, a large amount of trash even in wax cappings and inside of the strainer, that's what I caught as well. All right, we're going to check back in this just a little bit longer. That is the whole pile of trash I got from this rendering. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and close the lid and also plug up that gate right there and then put a lid on this because I'm going to have bees in here very shortly and I do not want them to be going into that. And we can't do any more for today, so... <laughs> I'll see y'all tomorrow. All right, bright and early. Let's get in there. See what kind of block of wax we got. And I am very anxious to see how much wax we got from all of those cappings. Oh, nice, nice little brick right there. And I don't even think I'm going to have to dump that thing out. Let me just reach in there and pull it out. Ooh, it's a little chilly this morning. It's about 46, 47. Roll up my sleeve a little bit. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Probably about, that's a good... Seven eighths, three quarters, one inch thick. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice chunk of wax. Ah, uh, I can smell the honey in this. And that water, I, there, there was a lot of honey in it. So this is going to go to feed the bees. But nice little chunk of wax. I'm, I'm guessing this thing is better than a pound for sure. So this is our second block right here, 
and we'll get the other one together and we'll close out the video. And here are our two blocks of wax side by side. And you can see the difference in the color of the wax. Oh, this thing is heavy. <laughs> as well as the thickness. The capping wax, I'm re really kind of surprised I had, I got this much wax out of those cappings. It, it um, really surprised me. And, and of course, it surprised me with this one because I really thought that from all the comb that I dropped into that kettle, I would have gotten a block bigger this, than this. And, and there was that part that was still sticking out at this part. So there's, there's a little bit extra more wax still in, inside the wax kettle room, but that's, that'll all get taken care of in the, in the second rendering. But all in all, still well worth the effort that I do to get the wax out of that old wax. And, and it's always a beautiful thing for me to, to see it and <laughs> smell it. This stuff smells, oh, it, it smells actually better than honey. It just, I, I, don't, I don't know what the right word to describe that smell is, but it's just, I just say like it smells like a, a spring in the morning because it's just so fresh, so fresh. But for me, it's really worth the effort to take all that basically useless material and then convert it back or recycle it back into a state that can be used once again for our bees and this stuff will go go ahead and be used for spreading the wax when I melt it again onto our foundations for our bees so I'm looking forward to that'll be the next step and one thing about wax when I when I get it I like to build it up for a little while and then just melt it so it, it just depends on on what I'm doing how busy I am whether I get to melt it or not but this time we had enough to make some nice block of wax. So that's all I got for you on this video. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching and I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Red, I'm out of here until the next video. See you guys later.